Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 286, August 20th, 2024. Uh, I was here last month for the last meeting, kind of, mostly, sort of, not feeling terribly well. Uh, so we didn't do triage, but we did release Wix 501. That's out there. Things are going well. It's all that's wonderful and goodness and lightened things and FireJack customers are happy. So we're happy. All right. Uh, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. And as I just alluded, uh, we're going to go jump into triage and that's going to be basically the whole meeting. And I'm hoping we get through all the issues because there's a bunch of them. And if you have any questions, we'll take them at the end. But without further ado, let's go get into uh, the work that we have because I think we've decided two months is too long. One month is good, but two months of no triage, probably too long. Bob, you ready? I am ready. I was ready last month, to be clear. But... Yeah, you were ready. I definitely yeah. was not. Okay. Uh, we're going to start at the top with a couple of whips opened by our very own Bob. Uh, 8580, investigate using MSI print over EULA custom actions. This is a great idea. Yeah, it, it, it occurred to me, you know, the we avoided the features in MSI 4.5 and 5.0 because, well, they weren't everywhere. That was a long time ago. It was. Um, it's everywhere now. So, you know, there's no reason not to take advantage of the quote unquote new stuff that works, unlike, say, some of the service stuff they added. Um, and, you know, the, the code's there, it works, but uh, it turns out the EULA printing stuff is extremely confusing to some extent um, because of the new architecture-specific custom actions. Yeah. I don't think it's confusing. I think it's just something no one's had to do before. Now they have to do it. Blah, blah, blah. So I think this is a great idea. Yep, I agree. And I'm willing to take it. Now, this is the first of several that we run into here where I open something and I'm interested in doing it, but I'm not ready or able yet to declare when. So I think that's the uh, view future milestone. Uh, I suppose we could do that. Uh, just because I don't know for sure what is going to happen in Wix 6. So right. I suppose. All right. Uh, that MSI print to replace the custom action we have that does basically the same thing. All right. Yeah. 8584, uh, human readable strings to generate upright code. Uh, this is interesting. Um, upgrade code is like the last place we have a GUID um, in Wix, like that you must have, um, that you cannot avoid outside of some edge cases with components. Um, so the idea of being able to use some uh, I, string identifier is interesting, um, although it's a GUID, so it will get turned into a GUID because that's what the one installer expects. So it's a matter of making sure we navigate our way through all of the ways to make sure that it's always unique. Yeah, the good news is that the upgrade code doesn't change except when it needs to, and that necessity is determined by humans. So, uh, you know, basically, I think this just comes down to, you know, how do we talk about it? How do we document it? Um, yeah, there I came a couple of examples right there, um, and I think it. I don't know. It's 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 a little bit of syntactic sugar, but I like the idea of getting rid of of the last required GUID. Um, that shows up when you, you know, create a new project in Visual Studio from Heatwave. Yeah. I always worry about using URLs because URLs change when, you know, companies get bought or people fuss yeah. around with their things. And then you do not want to change that for your GUID. Um, but I don't have no. better answers for, hey, you need a name for your thing. Like, use your company name. No, company names change. I mean, it all goes to sure. what's something that you never change. Yeah, um, there, there is no such thing. Yeah, so, the company so. name is probably the most stable, and yeah. you know, you and I have both seen that that doesn't hold. Um, product names change. Yeah, uh, you know, there's yeah, there's nothing that's permanent. Um, you know, uh, domain names 
are probably the best thing because even if company names change, it's not like generally people, you know, oh, I'll just let that domain name lapse. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I agree. It's it, There's a risk that you don't get with a GUID. So. This is missing what the attribute name would be, whether it would use the upgrade code or a new attribute. Well, I hadn't actually given that much thought. Um, but yeah, I, I, there were a couple of people commented and I responded, I oh, don't oh. like the idea of, oh. of over, overloading the upgrade code Not name. Not hash. It has to be SHA. And it can't be MD5. Yeah. Um, and like I says, if we want, like I says, like I said, if we take this, um, yeah, we do have to do a design there to make sure that everyone's on board with the limitations. Off the top of my head, I'd use something like upgrade ID or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. probably mutually exclusive with upgrade code mm -hmm. and you already called out yeah generated bind time very very late um i think you should also cross it with other um package um identify uh, other packaging technologies um msi actually is the publisher for theirs which is the the um, signing the the subject of their certificate. Um, upgrade seed, and then we just stable GUID calc it. Stable. GUID. Well, it's not a seed though. Is it, it's yeah, we don't it's, want it's we don't want that value. changing. Yeah, it does not change. Yeah, it, it it will be a hash of whatever the user supplied. It'll turn into a good for MSIs. Um, yeah, I should look at other packaging technologies to just get the right name here. Just, uh, sorry, name of the attribute? Yeah, name of the attribute. Um, and then after that, I'm not sure how many more restrictions we should put on it. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think. I know MSIX has some rules, some of which are weird. Um, yes. They, but it, primarily they don't differentiate between a product and a quote unquote family, which I think is how MSI refers to it. Um, I mean, they have, MSIX has a very linear concept of lifetime. Of, mm -hmm. of product lifetime. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of other things, and I yeah, I I I don't remember what Ensys does off the top of my head. Um, Not and, much. And Inno setup has an identifier. Yeah, but sorry, I guess, but I, uh, that that's my hesitation. I I, I know Inno well enough. It doesn't really have a concept of family like MSI does. Yeah, it just it doesn't. It's, it's it just product. Package. It has the product ID and then yeah, the versions it's, remove it, the previous versions kind of thing. Right. Much more linear. Um, yeah. Less, yeah. There's there's less flexible. There's no branching in that family tree. <laughs> um. Yeah. So it's a matter of yeah. Like it it's that. You could also so, sorry, are, are, you, are you are you questioning whether there's a better name than like upgrade ID? Yeah, I kept just, upgrade in the name just I, because. I, agreed. I, I'm I'm just going through. Is there a better name than that? Because it's one of the few attributes that'll show up on all MSI packages. So, is there a, a name that's generic to describe this that spans across all everybody's technologies? And I'm not holding out a lot of hope that there's a good name. Right, but you know, upgrade 
definitely shows its MSI lineages. So I'm just trying to think about if there's other ones that we could do that gives us benefits as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it does show its MSI heritage because, you know, that was intentional. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like I think about NuGet as well, but NuGet also is just based off the idea of the package. Right, so. right, right. Yeah, I, I, I mean, to be clear, it's, I mean, that's fine, right? I mean, that, that's, that's basically MSI has this concept of a family that mm-hmm. most other technologies don't, mm-hmm. but you know the that makes it more complicated and you know mm-hmm. and that shows up in the schema and in like wix2 in the difference between the upgrade and upgrade version elements yeah whereas major upgrade element kind of brings you back to the concept of having a single family yeah uh, cool. because that's the you know 9x percent case So here's a, a random exploration down that path. Um, so I've been toying with the idea of bringing the package ID concept in um, that we don't, that MSI does not have. Um, or, uh, the, all of the other installation technologies, Ensys being kind of an outlier, um, well, they have it too, have an ID of their package. Um, and MSI does not. But if uh, you need to expand on what you mean by ID, well, everything like NuGet has an ID, um, InnoSetup has the ID, um, the package ID, the uh, MSIX has the package ID, and that is you know the the version upgrade um, line that you define with that identifier um, is the package ID. And how is that any different from a package code or a product code? It it's stable across versions, where the package code changes every build, and the product code changes based on what kind of upgrade behavior you want inside the Windows installer. Okay, so so let me add to the list. How is that any different from the package code, product code, or upgrade code? Right. So that's where I was going to then. Okay. <laughs> is upgrade code then? It ends up being kind of like the upgrade code for simple packages with single lineage, which is what. Everybody expects, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, instead yeah, they yeah. get this GUID thing that they have to man manage and things like that. And well, we got rid of the major upgrade element, so now you just have to throw this GUID on there, and you don't know why, but it's just being handled for you. But if it was the package ID, I'm betting haven't done the you know research, but I'm betting most people would be like, oh, that's the thing that controls my <laughs> my upgrades. If I keep that thing stable, then I will upgrade versions later with the same package ID. Um, So the idea of maybe package ID is this thing that is upgrade code um, if you don't specify an upgrade code um, for the simple packages. For the majority of packages that are just single lineage. I'm just running through this experiment of what if it was that for MSIs? It's the package ID is actually the upgrade code for MSIs where it's the ID for all these other package technologies. And then they end up working very similarly. MSI, of course, is way more uh, flexible and can do way more, but we can hide that uh, uh, complexity if... So we're talking about the same thing, right? If upgrade code is the package identity, Mm -hmm. then this proposal gives the upgrade code, you know, the arbitrary string capability, which is basically what you get from, from like, you know, and, and NuGet basically Mm -hmm. just again, MSI is, is, you know, has a lot more levers and knobs and whatnot. Most people would look at the product name and go, Oh, that's the identity, except well, yeah, yeah, except that we're it's pretty not. clear in the end that that's the thing that shows up in ARP and it's not the thing elsewhere. Right, right, right. Now, it's the, just you know, the downside's going to be people will be like, oh, I have a package ID and that's the thing I'm expecting the ARP key when they get one layer deeper, right? Oh. And then they're going to find out that no, 
<laughs> it's not. There's still a good in there, but never mind that. <laughs> yeah. No. It's, I, then I, you have well, to know I, the Windows installer, right? I was just kind of exploring the concept of the package ID being the upgrade code, and how far did that go before it fell over badly? Well, I think it goes all the way because, again, that's the that's the concept that I was talking about here. Um, yeah. I called it upgrade ID because I wanted to replace the upgrade code. Upgrade code is that stable identifier. It's yeah. just a GUID that is not helpful. Yep. And, you know, apparently braces and dashes scare people. So. Well, you need another uh, tool to generate them. I mean, it's always just a little bit of extra work. Um, or and, you just use the template. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't use a template, um, templates make it easy. Um, yeah. Uh, to be clear, though, uh, I, every time you say package identifier or package ID, I shudder. So we need we, it. Definitely can't be that. It's it's too overloaded. Identity maybe could work, but I don't. You, you don't want the word package in there because that that. Cause... No, 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 no. I, I I'd say the package element with the ID attribute. Um, okay. Hey, you, did you feel the silence? I felt it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I like this, this is truly a, a space that I've been noodling around for a while. Um, trying to think about what is it? And I'd never really thought of it. it I've never found what the package ID was in the one installer. I never thought of it as the upgrade code until now. And so I'm kind of spinning around going, well, that's, Interesting. It does kind of fulfill the same role that the package sure. ID does in all these other places. Never mind that underneath, a lot of people expect the package ID to be the thing that shows up ARP, and it doesn't. And yada yada yada. Sorry, we don't control that. Talk to the installer team. Um, and so I'm like, yeah, that's it's interesting to have it go that way. Yeah, I uh, again, I, I I don't react well to the you know. To the word package in there um it, it's it fits in many other cases ish but it it does not work well for msi just because of how package is used um i like the idea I, i'm also worried about id because that just seems really well you know two characters it's not a lot to to you know put forward i i, I i'm interested in like the word identity that's perhaps because it's more than two characters. It, 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 it's not an identifier. It's the identity of the package. Yeah. I, let, me, let me think about it a little more and see if I could come up with a better argument for it because literally this is okay. the first time I kind of went through and went, well, what if? And I don't even know if I like it. So I'm like trying to defend a position that is kind of like, this is kind of working, but maybe it doesn't. But... I think it works. I'm just at this point. I'm just. I'm saying we could replace. I I said upgrade ID. I think we could replace um, that with any other ID. You know, we could replace it. Um, I just I I I don't like the word package in there just because of how badly it's overloaded inside MSI. Sure. I I I yeah. Like I said, I have to kind of work through this. Jacob abuses the concept to generate an upgrade code to determine the GUID on the fly without having to manage a huge list of GUIDs. Really? You generate them? That's interesting. Yeah, if uh, you know the rules. Why? If you know how oh, you're oh, oh, using. Oh, I guess. I see. You could have. Yeah, I mean, you're basically doing the same thing that this your, the proposal here is. It's like you have a bunch of names and you turn them into GUIDs and put, put them in and. Then you could do it inside MS build task, and that makes sense too. Yeah, you absolutely could implement it something like that. Um, and we won't remove that ability because you'll absolutely be able to specify a upgrade code forever and ever and ever. Um, because that's such a fundamental concept in in Wix that the you know uh, if a simplification didn't have all of the functionality that an upgrade code did, you know, you'd want to bring your own. Like, oh, I need to reuse one from another package. I can't figure out the string to generate that code. Let me just yeah. put the upgrade code in there because, you know, for legacy reasons, we have to, you know, use the correct one. And all that will still work. This is just about making it even easier to get started with Wix. So I, I, I need to sit and stare at 
to sit and think about the upgrade code and the package ID relationship. Sure. App name, version, flavor. Yeah. Yeah, this but is all, the same thing we do for, for component codes. Yes, that's right. App name, version, flavor. Yeah, however you want to do that. And technically speaking, version maybe should or shouldn't be in there. It depends on what your versioning upgrade. And then we come back to minor upgrades. Yes. That whole thing. Yes. But that's that whole strategy thing that I'm also thinking about as we're doing this. So um, yep. there's things here. Anyway, so uh, uh, let's bring it back next month after trying to think about it a little bit and see if we move forward a bit farther on it. Oh, it is now assigned it. to you for that. Oy, that very perfect. Thank you very much. All right. 8585, unnamed bind path not respected. What? Oh, in files. Well, specifically with the files element. Files element. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. That's yeah, hard. I, I, I've looked at this. Um, I don't think it'll work. It, it's, it, so technically it could work because the files element during the optimized phase does resolve bind paths. So it could work. Um, I'm struggling with the idea that, well, sorry, the, the documentation says, if you have an unnamed bind path, then I'll use that unless there's, you know, another root directory. Um, otherwise I use the source path. And in my head, I found that very clever back in the day when I was working on files. Now I look at it and I go, well, that's dumb. Who thought of that? Yeah. Just because I don't like the, the, the change in behavior. Yeah. So I'm, I'm now debating whether <sighs> I like the, I like the behavior of the unnamed bind path. Cause if you just give it one, if you have a layout of your binaries that is, you know, very close to what you ship, then the unnamed bind path could be very handy. I'm not sure the source default has much value. So I'm kind of struggling with that one. Um, so in short, I would like to take this and investigate. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about, about it. I'm worried about it. It could have really, really unexpected. Like this inside an MS build, will like suck in everything under everything in your, all of your projects. And it's like, I yeah. don't think that. Well, good. one of the things I considered was, you know, not allowing a, a, a undirectoried wildcard. Ah, uh, yeah. Like this. if you have a wildcard, it has to have a root somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not, <laughs> Yeah, uh, this requires thought. I don't know what, yeah. I'm not sure yeah. what the right answer is. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's, a, that's interesting. Yeah, not easy. <laughs> All right, 8589, package version incorrect. Incorrect is, oh yeah, this is the insignificant zeros. And I kind of sat and thought about it for a while and decided that, yeah, we should have, we should support insignificant zeros. Um, and I fixed it when I was doing some work. So it's all set up for Wix 6, which I think is the answer. So that you will, this is basically, a, Wix 6 will have the same uh, behavior as Wix 3 did. Um, and if you don't want it, then set your variables a little differently. All right, Wix v4 project name and all this are not working pre-build, post-build event. Yeah, you're doing it wrong. You see, this is just the, the, the project. The yeah, they're doing it wrong. project. Yeah, yeah this stuff. is that stupid again. They're doing it okay. wrong. You need to go understand SDK projects and why it doesn't work that way. And C-sharp projects don't work that way. None of them work that way. So don't do that. Uh, and it's documented. Yeah, so just, yeah. Don't, yeah. 8597, temp environment variable not respected in 314. Um, don't care. Well, the... the... We use an explicitly safe directory. Following the temp variable would be bad, right? I mean, I, I'm I'm 
trying to figure out if oh, they're... Oh, oh, execute any bundle installer built with 3.14. Oh, yeah, it still is still in the temp. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, this is... I thought this was build. I, I'm... Ugh. This is burn. Um, they really should put that in the title. Um, that there's a bundle does not follow it. Um... Oh, all right. Set the global system temp to something besides Windows temp and then do that. Yeah. Um, it is complicated for system variables, for system, for elevated bundles. Um, right, right. And it does not pick the temp variable first. I forget the order. I forget the order of the searches across this. This is not trivial. This is very... No. This space no. is very hard. Um, but on the right version of Windows, it's going to go to system temp anyway. Correct. Right. Yes, it, it will not go to that secret Windows temp. 314.1. 314 okay. Well, this says they're on Win. Oh, 21. What's Win 21 H2? Is that Win 11? Uh, win 10? Win. Uh, one of those. It's like Win 21 H2. There's. Okay. You have to... It's Windows 10 21 H2, H2 or Windows 11 20 H2. Yeah, that's not. It's also not Wix 3.1. Right. 3.14.1? Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Um... Well, I mean, the elevated engine. Okay, you ele you ex ah, you execute a bundle, I don't unelevated. Know. The you know the ba the normal clean room stuff is going to happen in a user directory. Correct. But the elevated engine will always go to a secure temporary directory. Correct. And that follows all the you know, somewhat con convoluted rules. Yes. So, separately, if you start the bundle elevated, the convoluted rules kick in immediately. Yeah. I don't think this is a bug. I think this is, yeah, yeah well, working... Yeah. It's, it's, as designed, as fixed. Yeah, as fixed. And then the only question is, should it behave this way? Should it pick up the temp variable earlier? The system temp variable earlier. I'm, I'm just a little... Fu the, I, the code is complicated. I'm a little fuzzy on the order right now without going and looking at the code. Right, yeah, I don't. And, I, I, as I recall, the variable was like third or fourth. Yeah, that was my remind. That's what I remembered as well. And that using whatever Windows system temp said it was was the was first. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously this is a. Um, it's not a security vulnerability because updating no. the system environment variable. Means you're already right. an admin, but Correct. and if you update yeah. it, you have to make sure you put it into another admin only location. Um, Which you know, it it would be very easy for an admin to give you an insecure directory. Sure. They are in a bad spot if they do that though. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Like that's that's kind of beyond us at that point. So yeah. the the yeah, the the request here is to use the temp variable, system temp variable for using any of the other variables that Burn looks at. That's no, I think that that's wrong. System temp should win. Oh, I mean, when in, available. in that scenario, system temp, system temp, if it's appropriate, i.e. running a system and it's available, should win. Um, I'm just, I'm... I don't know. I, I guess you could argue that 
the user should have some control over that, but it's persnickety code, or it's not persnickety code, it's persnickety, you know, design, security. Yeah, it's, it's trying to be very safe. I wonder if they rebooted the machine, too. Like, I wonder if you have to reboot to move it, too. If that, uh, I think, well, I think tempted. we re... You, uh -huh. There's no way to get a system var variable variable without reading the, the registry, as I recall. Oh, right. So that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I forgot about the right read, register read in there. Yeah, it's, all that code is just... So the real question is, should it use temp? Should... I, I mean, honestly, we could put it up for grabs and say, if someone wants to go evaluate the current Oof. behavior and update it to temp, we could do that. Um, and, you know, do the whole security analysis of it. I'm. I'm not because it, it, it kind of, I can see why you want to do it. You're like, ah, my system drive is too big. So I move my temp folder and then this installer continues to use your system drive. I could see the desire to think their way through that. If someone really wanted to work their way through all the security implications of it. Um, I, I suppose. Don't I, your I, bundles elevated. Um, well, but so again, th and this isn't a great bug report for that. My assumption is that the, this would apply to the elevated engine as well, right? So it's not just the whole running bundles elevated, though I suspect that's the case here. Yeah. But... I, I think we could put this up for grabs to go. The current behavior was built for security reasons. And if someone wants to do the work to tease apart that for good reason, we could certainly entertain that change um, as long as it maintains the security um, behavior, obviously. Uh, okay. Because I, I don't, I, I could see it. It's like, yeah, you're using temp. Why isn't it using temp? I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. Like, the other thing is, and I don't remember if we have this, we talked about having a policy key that allowed to tell burn to use a different um, cache location. And I think that yep. exists, but I know it's not documented. So there's that too on top of everything that if we haven't done it, because I don't remember if we did, um, that's another way out of this. So yeah, not trivial thing to consider, but if someone wants to go through it and move it, we could, could definitely entertain that. 8597, man, some of these are, Harder. Right. 8602, allow merge module inclusion with default feature. Ah. Uh. Uh, okay. Oh, I don't really oh, care. Oh, this is a rooted but... merge. Un, un, un... Yeah, there's no. Yeah. This is unpleasant because the whole merge, merge ref thing. Uh -huh. Um. I've never really liked that, but I understand why it exists, and we'd have to come up with something different if we wanted to do this. Yep. Um, sure, I, I'm I'm fine with it going up for grabs. Yep. I'm not interested in yeah, some could implement in doing that. it, but yeah, it's not as easy as you might think. But yeah, sure, it is not because merge modules are harder. Yeah, cool. Yeah, someone could do that. Eight six zero eight. Uh, auto harvest files creates two equal directories in the MSI file. It does. Um, this is just an artifact of of how the the subdirectories get handled. This is a dupe recursing. of that other bug where like subdirectory paths, like there's something about the way different directories get created. They get different director IDs. I already have that open. There's there's one open about looking in. Yeah, and I think you're. I same. think you're right. Um, it's, it's a matter I, of just I, trying to get those to all reduced down to the same answer. Yeah, it, that would make for a fine optimization. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't like that. It should do the better. Basically, that's what we should, we should do better than what we're doing. Right yeah. Now. I'm that's my like, okay. I, I don't disagree. And I have that one assigned to me and I would like to do okay. better. I just haven't yet. I will, I will close this one against that one. All right. Cool. 
Um, 8611 schema doc omits attribute group documentation. I am fixing this, so it's assigned to me. I will take that in Wix, in web. I'll take that in web project. Pretty straightforward. It's just improving documentation. Um, 8615, XC package payload version attribute nullable object must have value. Okay, bootstrapper XC package payload version. Remove it and the attribute, it will fail. Oh, invalid, okay. Yeah, this feels like another one we had. Um, according to that, the version must not be specified when the hash is not specified. Yeah, this is really complicated. There's another bug that's similar to this, if not the same as this. The, the interactions between these are kind of annoying. Um, Yeah, someone should look at that, straighten all that out. There's another bug related to this. I can't remember right off the top of my head. But yeah, it's annoying. It should not. Well, it shouldn't crash, first of all. Yeah, that, that's the root cause. So, yep. And there's another one that's similar to that. And the reason it crashes is because the code processing on these XS packages is just massively complicated and I'm very not happy with it, but I haven't figured out how to take it apart and put it back together in a better way. Um, it bugs me. It bugs me a lot, actually. Um, but not enough that I've figured out how to solve it yet. Um, so yeah, this can go for grabs. I agree, should not crash. That's the big thing. Take this repro and run it until it does the right thing. That's basically the answer. Pretty straightforward bug if someone wants to work on it. I uh, sorry, that's not true. <laughs> straightforward bug to reproduce. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say you just went through. It's gonna be a nasty little bug given all the error checks that are trying to navigate through this thing and the way the code is put together. I was just like, ugh, I really don't like it. So, uh, yeah, um, that bug. So yeah, you know, but otherwise, don't do that. Eight six one nine file element requires keep empty directory attributes. No, it doesn't. I agree. No, <laughs> that's not no. what this thing's for. You'll have no. to create them by hand. Lots of ways. To yeah, do that. we don't need to make the thing more even complicated. Uh, no, it, it absolutely intentionally. You yeah, know, no, the, uh, you know, my story is the major upgrade element. It used to be really simple. Yeah. Now it has like a dozen attributes. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Just just go to create your MTF directories. Um, Wix CLI. I think we talked about this last month. Uh, that's Did part we? of Wix five hundred one. Yeah, it's the new CLI for GitHub Actions that we need to go do that. So um, anyway, these are a series of bugs that I found. Well, that one. Did we not talk about this? We did. Oh, maybe we just talked about it in the blog I'm, entry. No, it was part. No, it was part of. It was. It, it's in five hundred one. I just don't remember that we discussed it because I don't think we actually because we didn't do any triage. Oh, this came a triage? couple of days before the all meeting. Right, all right. Wix 501 think, creates this yeah, MSI called Wix CLI MSI. Its purpose is for CI CD machines where people expect Wix to be present. It's there in Wix 3. So we thought, you know, Bob and I are thinking about it. When Wix 3 gets deprecated and should no longer be part of CI CD systems, whenever the people choose to do that, there should be a replacement for those people that just expect Wix to be there. And so the Wix CLI is that. It's not intended for other people to use it. People probably will. But whatever, um, it exists to install Wix uh, command line tools, and that's it. So you can use it. So that's what exists. And we will have to get it to GitHub Actions um, at some point to live alongside the Wix 3 so that they can eventually get rid of Wix 3. Um, all right, uh, Wix tool set firewall. Wix extension was missing version information. I found this when working on Wix 501, 8624. I fixed it. Um, when working on an extension bug, related bug somewhere, um, Wix extension list was skipping over the machine-wide extensions. So you do a list, any machine-wide. Oh, it was when I was doing the CLI. I said, hey, show me the machine-wide extensions because the CLI installs the machine-wide and it was skipping them. So that's what 8625 is. And it's just like, these are, are small bug fixes. Um, things that hadn't been found. Um, also updated our dependencies um, so that we're clean on the vulnerabilities. So that's 8628. Basically, we did a release of Wix, so 
hey, let's update our dependencies to the proper versions of things. So there's that. Oh, and here we are, 8627.net has changed their signatures again. That was a little faster than they did last time, and now they've broken us again with no way of fixing this out in the world. This is gonna happen every time they change their cert. Yeah, and if they move to the new world of certificate behaviors, it's gonna change all the time potentially because they're gonna get that new, very short-lived certificate. I don't know that it's gonna maintain a stable um, thumbprint for them. Does the thumbprint really change with the HSM stuff? I have is this HSM it. or or no no no? This is the new way of doing trust of doing application installers at the the. I forgot the the signing service that Microsoft put together. They gave it a name that I can never remember now. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the Azure thing. Yeah, and so I mean, it's interesting. It's cool. One of the the behaviors it has is that all the certificates are short lived. They're like I don't know a month or three months. I haven't looked deeply, but they're really short lived. And of course, so they expire really rapidly, but they're valid because they were signed within this timestamp. But you can't keep them around for a long time. I haven't verified, but my expectation is the thumbprint probably changes every time, which means that this whole thumbprint verification to know that you're getting the correct signed, something signed with the same lineage is probably toast. Um, if this is where we're going and I don't have a good answer that doesn't say, yeah, just shove any trusted, <laughs> any trusted executable in this space and run it. <sighs> so, yeah, this is a challenge. This is a real challenge. I don't know how. I don't know how to do this now. If they're going to keep cha updating the same URL behind the scenes, it's going to break things. It's, it breaks the trust relationship. Um, yeah, completely. You have to I mean trust the URL um, is handing you the correct bits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like that at all. Um, it, before it's like, we knew this would happen when certificates expire, but that was two to three years. Typically, if you're saying it's going to happen every month, then yeah, that, I, that, I have not verified that, but I just did a quick, you know, cursory review over it and what I understood of it, it was, it was very, uh, inspired by the Acme protocol, the thing behind let's encrypt. Let's encrypt, right, yeah. right. So theirs is all very short-lived. It's like they last a month, and you just get them yep. every month. Because it's easy to get them again. Yeah, because of that protocol. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, this is a big problem. Or this will be a problem. I, I don't know what to do. I mean, you just have to private host .NET 4.8 or something. Well, <laughs> that was my suggestion. Way back when, anyway. Yep. It doesn't mean we need... Do we have to go all the way down to just saying, if it's signed, period? If you say, if it's signed, period, then any signed file could be tossed in. Yeah, which I would find unacceptable, and I would go happily back to hosting my own runtime, or, yeah, redistributables. Well, it's a, it turns into an attack vector. All you have to do is sign your thing and then shove it in there. Yeah, exactly. So no, it's, it's it's horrible. Yeah. I mean, if, if you own the, the, the endpoint, then you have, you know, however much control you want to exert over it. Yeah, but, it, but like but, layout won't work. Like if you do a layout, you drop that on diction, then you try to send it somewhere else. We can't verify that the layout is, has integrity. Sure, sure. So you're, you're broken again. Yeah. Or, I mean, that scenario gets broken. It's like, well, I don't know. We trust everything, but not this prereq thing. So <laughs> Just a prereq. <laughs> exactly. Right. So if anything modified that after you pull the layout, then you're busted again. It's like, well, yeah. it's just, it's challenging. Um, well, if you do a layout and the target is, you know, an S3 blob and you're still doing the cert check against a thumbprint, then even if it's old, it's fine. That that's still secure. No, no. no. If, if I'm a customer, I brought download a bundle, I do a layout, yeah, and Burn will be like, "Great, here's the signed blob, 
and then you replace that slime blob with oh, something oh, oh. else, it's we will happily carry that sign thing if we don't have some way of saying this is the correct sign thing as opposed to right, any right, right. sign thing. And well, that's where the you the trust yeah, yeah. just falls apart. You're like, here's this thing outside. I've brought it local. And you're like, great. Is it the correct one? And we're like, right now we can at least say, well, it was signed by the same certificate that the original person sent. And you're like, okay, so I trust that mm -hmm. the person didn't lose their certificate and sign something else. Now, without something, you're like, is it signed? And you're like, yeah. You're like, great. We'll use it. And that, of course, I mean, because malware is never signed, right? I mean, it yeah. just. <laughs> no, this is, this is what. So, it, but if I host the download and my bundle is still checking the thumbprint, that that much is still secure. Yes. Sorry. I was talking about if we some, have to remove yeah, the yeah, thumbprint yeah. because. No, no, no. Sorry. I, validation. I, I throw that, I exclude that as reasonable just because it's so insecure. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I trust Microsoft well enough, but. No, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, well, um, that that's the problem. This this the validation of this is not able to. You, you can't validate. The integrity yeah, is getting um, broken farther and farther down, and I don't know how to solve this problem. Is there something? I mean, the the thumbprint probably just contains too much data. I mean, is it reasonable to check? Can you check just the name, the you publisher, mean, the whatever the, they call it now? The subject name? Subject, thank you. Yes, you can test. You, we could test the subject name. That's what MSIX does. And MSIX has all the problems um, right. around that because subject names also change uh, yeah. randomly. Um, but maybe that's better. I don't... <laughs> well, it would solve the problem for you know the big redistributables. Presumably, I haven't checked that their subject names are stable across all these versions. <laughs> yeah, now that I've said it, um, it turns out, yeah. I, I mean, certificates are a bit more formal than you know people throwing random strings inside their you know ARP entries. And Correct. Whatnot. But I also don't know how validated they are. Like, I don't know yeah. how hard it is, especially with the new signing service. I don't know how much it checks. We would need to verify that you can't just put any subject identifier in there, that someone couldn't say, oh, let me copy and paste .NET Frameworks subject identifier and put it in my yeah. cer certificate request, sign up there and have it come back and go, yeah, there you go. And you're like, great. Now I look like you know, .NET Framework uh, yep. because I have the same subject. Name. I'm assuming they don't do that, but like, there's a lot of verification that has to go around behind the scenes yeah. to validate that. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. This is Certificates are... A challenge all the way around and we're just gonna get busted here well that's unpleasant yeah i think this has to go up for grabs and someone has to sit and stare at the design of this and see what are good options going forward because i don't know what they are right now um i can i can blow all of them up very rapidly um right right so far I'm going to go ahead and just upload my stuff into blob storage and then um, I'll rely on hashes. Yeah. Hashes of course are the easiest, most straightforward thing, which is why we also recommend why we also do not default to signing and we recommend hashes because it just, it locks it down to the correct file and then yep. all your security problems are gone. You're like this one, but you have to trust that the person on the other side of the URL is not going to start changing your binary blobs, which Microsoft is very happily doing right now. Yep. So that's and the might start doing more often. Great. I don't know how often they're going to change that for it. Like they published it for a security fix, probably, and that's what did it. So, well, no, but they update them. I mean, until .NET four drops out of support, which is thirty twenty thirty four or something. I mean, it, it, it'll be around for a while. Well, then we'll just have .NET Core be the next one. So, or whatever. Well, that that is its own set of problems. Yeah. Anyway, but as long as .NET two and four are in support, they're going to get bug fixes every month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Historically. Yeah. Well, so this is a very hard challenge. We can keep chasing their certificate, but that's all we're doing is we're just chasing it. Yeah. All right. Uh, eight six two 
eight, uh, MSMQ customer actions fail. I think this was, is this the one? Yeah, Bevan did the work to go fix up all the little bits and pieces that were busted around MSMQ and cool stuff like that. So that was wonderful. Yep. Uh, someone put it back together. Yay. I, this is MSMQ still being used. This is why I, I'm seriously, I'm, I'm going to figure out how to bring telemetry to Wix so we can figure out what people are actually using because this is just like really uh, the ancient history. All right. Util user not able to create a domain user in standard usage. 8629. Um, you cannot. Oh, it fails to create a user. All right. Trying to create a domain admin user requires um to be oh. impersonated. You have to be running as a domain admin on, I don't know if you'd be on the domain control or not, but you have to be running as a domain admin, but you have to impersonate the domain admin because impersonating actually has, a domain admin has more privileges than system does. It's very unusual. And so this needs a whole custom action, different way of doing everything to create domain custom actions. So yeah. Need new custom actions that would be impersonated that would do the same, but would work for a domain user. Yeah, I generally agree with this, the statements in here. And I know Bevan's been doing work in the user custom action. I just haven't had any cycles to go back and look at the PR. He has a whole bunch of stuff in there. Uh, need to do that. Um, so I think this goes up for grabs if we can see if Bevan wanted to take it. I didn't get a feel of where he ended up. Oh, maybe this is, no. This is another issue. Yeah, that's another issue. No, no, that's the PR. Okay, maybe this is the P. Oh, it's in this PR? Great. Cool. Then I've already started looking at little bits of pieces of this, but not, I only like the coding style, not actually the thing underneath it. So cool. I uh, Should we ask? I think we should ask, see if he wants to take it. Um, let's drop a message, say, hey, do you want this assigned to you and uh, finish sure. that PR? Just so we don't assume. Um, and let's leave it triage then, so we come back to it next week. Um, but yeah, there we go. Creating domain users, really, really tricky kind of thing. Um, eight six thirty manage custom actions leave behind an SFX CA folder. Uh, this was introduced when we were fixing the security issue in uh, in the manage custom action host, I think, and fixed it. Um, someone gave a good hint and put together the full fix and fix that in 501. So that is fixed in 501. Um, 8632, schedule actions based off symbols and tables. Um, uh, ensure table standard actions are no longer scheduled if there are no symbols that, oh, oh, yeah. this, isn't, the, a, this so, isn't a feature. This is a, okay, fine, bug. Well, it. It's not technically a bug. Um, we did lose functionality yes. back in the day, i.e. Yeah. Wix 3. You could, an extension could do an ensure table, and that would get all of the appropriate custom actions scheduled. Um, right. Because yes. Wix went through and said, oh, there's a table. I will pull in the appropriate standard actions so is this pull request not doing that should rely on relevant standard actions okay no yeah this this is different okay um I mean, yeah you have to use the tables you can't use the elements you can't use the symbols you have to use the tables if right right well I, tables, so starting with four the symbols are are what's checked um, this is only an issue. Uh, so this came from remove mm -hmm. folder ex. This is an issue because remove folder ex does not um, actually create at build time any rows in the remove file table. Right. It does so at runtime. Yep. Oh, um, then it just needs to say, hey, when you ensure this, you need to ensure these actions too. I see. Oh, let's ensure table simple. Okay. That was just a, you know, off the top of my head. Right now, everything is, all of that standard action scheduling is handled by the symbol. 
by the presence of a symbol. Yeah, that's probably uh, too. It, it doesn't work in the case where you just want an empty table, where you need an empty table. Yep. Um, yeah, that's busted. Yeah, for your temporary rows to. to yeah, that's in. probably a bad translation from Wix 3 to Wix 4, probably. Subtle, you know, it worked generally, but not as well as it would have worked in Wix 3 when you're like, hey, is this table here? Yes. Well, then you're going to want these actions. Yep. Yep. Which is how MSI approaches it. Correct. That's the way MSI works. That's the way it should happen and ideal it happens in the back end but i don't know if it has to happen earlier i'm a little fuzzy on where it might have to happen earlier given other dependencies so that could be tricky i oh, thought all the yeah. actions got moved to the back end though so maybe it's safe anyway i agree with this <laughs> um and I, I agree with the sentiment here that it should be based off tables not symbols which is the final statement down here, right? Yes, this is true. Yeah. The reverse is not true. Correct. Yep. 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 I agree with all that last comment. So yeah, great. Great if someone fixed this. Um, if this PR isn't the one doing it. So this is probably based off of symbols. So anyway, good idea. Not quite the right fix then. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get to this, though. I have other things I know are more important to me than this one. Um, I'll, I'll take it temporarily. All right. Okay, where are we? My goodness. How far are we? I've lost track because I keep I've refreshed a couple times. All right. Um, There's like 10 left. Okay. All right. Let's see how we go for a little bit longer. 8633 files element requires HJCU. Let's in remove file table. Oh, per user. Yeah, per user files suck. Yep. I agree with that. Um, I think I don't, the, I, he, I don't think Heat did any of this. No, I it could did. be wrong, but no. I don't think it did. No, I, and I think, honestly, I think we need to be a little more aggressive. In the back of my head, I'm, I wonder how many of these things are true if we install to like non-roaming folders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you assume, if you if you assume non-roaming user profiles, then I'm hundred and point one percent confident that these are. Yeah. So it's basically mostly most of the sorry the the key pass stuff. Yes, um, the remove file stuff. No, that is actually a thing. Really? Wow. Yeah. Even in like vocal app data or whatever? Yep. Yep. Ah, oh, jeez. Yep. I worked on a project that yeah, I know required you. some, uh, yeah, nuking. Remove, <laughs> remove folder EX, actually. So that one is real. I, I suspect the other one is not real in a non roaming profile, but. Wait, so you're saying if you put a file in a roaming profile or a non-roaming profile? Or Sorry, in in I'm confident that ICE 38 is wrong. In a, it's not a real thing in a non-roaming profile. Okay. I suspect it's real for a roaming profile, but I64, however, is a problem even in a non-roaming profile. That's busted. That doesn't make any sense at all. I know. What are they doing to break the... Eh. This is MSI and per user and never really getting the hang of it. Never quite getting it right. I get yeah, why said, they need HKCU keys. I don't like it. I get why they needed them. Um, yeah, yeah. But non-roaming profile. Yeah, it's such a pain. So... Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess this would say that files in per user locations doesn't work quite well. That is correct, which is also correct using, you know, non files. 
files. Right. Nothing generates this code that you need to generate. Yeah. All right. So not a bug. Someone could open a feature for it. I think is probably the way to go with that. That yeah, this does not work. No, not to work. If someone wants to make it work, it's going to be a feature that needs to be designed um, to handle all this. Yeah, and and you know, let's be real. It's non-trivial because oh yeah, you can't it's, know until bind time where you're living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's not not trivial. But and then then go all users equals two, <laughs> and like ah. Oh, well, and 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 I am actually curious to see if the behavior of a of a you know dual purpose package is any better. Yep. Yep. Just because it's newer, maybe it doesn't suck quite as much as an all per user package. Which would say always do a per user packet, always do a dual purpose package, but just lock it to per user. I don't know. Um, I'm curious. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, not a bug, but could be a feature, a big feature. Um, although this, yeah. Oh, anyway, all right. Um, eight six three eight. I tripped across this while working on several other things. I had a test for touch files, and it failed to sixty four bit initialization. It was I'm using touch files and test for something and found that it didn't work. So, anyway, there we go. I don't like the way we do 64-bit initialization in custom actions. It's way more complicated than it feels like it should be, but whatever. Um, 8645, extension validation. Early check on valid table name. Early check? I'd like to be a repo. As a, this is like a, per, a user. <laughs> this is like a, a whip in a bug form. Uh, be a very limitation of creating Wix tooling, da da da. Com plus has three tables that exceeded that, right? Wait, no, wait. Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing throws an error if your table names are too long. Yes. So it's just a matter of doing it the right time. It's like in the back end, verify that the tables are correct because you may create, you know, virtual tables and things like that that aren't used and that's all fine. Um, but if you create an uh, MSI table, it needs to follow the rules. Um, so yeah, that's a reasonable thing. Um, and there's a pull request for it that I haven't had a chance to look at. Nor have I. So anyway, uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, probably the same thing. See if he still wants to do that. And we'll need to get a little time to do that. Just been a little busy to go digging through those other things. All right. So anyway, yeah, should check in the back end. Make sure that the tables are correct. Uh, .NET Core Bootstrapper, despite having included as a prerequisite, 8654. Out of process, include .NET 8 as a prereq run, um, expected, and then you go out of prompt, and then you get a prompt. Oh, 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 this is the, yeah, okay. Um, I'll take this, this is a doc bug. Um, took me a second. Yeah, so they're, they're launching their BA first, which is causing their managed code to run first, which if it runs and doesn't find it, the, uh, .NET Framework has a nasty behavior. .NET has a nasty behavior showing a message box saying, hey, this thing can't run. Here's a message box to tell you this thing can't run, where I much prefer if it just returned a known error code to be like, yeah, this thing failed to run for this reason. Um, so you get this message box. So you have to use, there's a, you have to make your, your bootstrap application secondary so it always runs after the prereq to get the same behavior that you would have got a wish for. But I, th I think... The fact that this is here, I'm pretty sure I forgot to put that in the doc when upgrading. So I need to go update the doc. So go ahead and give this to me. Um, okay, so I, I asked the for the, for that authoring. I was under the assumption that if you did a Wix prerequisite bootstrapper application element from Ball, it would wire itself it up as the first. primary. That's true. I thought so too. I'll have to go look at that. It, okay. Yeah, like th that's this is yeah. So, but. It, I think it's missing. So yeah. Wix script. No, it's not a script. No <laughs> code. There's no script. All right. Um, don't care about that. Yeah. So this. 
I, I have memories that of us talking not about be, this. Well, this, this. That might be the problem. This might be the wrong one. But I have to go look. I have to go look. So I to, you may have to use the dot net one. I don't, I don't remember. I'll have to go dig into this. It's been a while since I, I looked at that. But the problem is the doc didn't tell them to do the right thing. If they, I, I could see I forgot that. I could see me forgetting to put that in the migration part. And it should be there. So. But that, that the prereq BA element doesn't wire them up correctly? I need to go double check and make sure oh, okay. the behavior and why that didn't work. It could be that you have to use the manage um, prereq BA or something like that. I have to go look. Um, so, yeah. I didn't know there were, there were two now. Uh, there was three. There was one for manage, there was one for .NET, and there was one for prereq. It was massively fun back then. Ew. Yep. All right. 8663. Uh, yeah, Bob found that GUIDs may be changing across uh, Wix versions, and they really shouldn't. So I want to add it. I mentioned I want to add a test. So he was very nice and open this issue for me to go make sure that the goods that we have tests that make sure that goods don't drift from one version to the next. And so and far then, they haven't. And then clear. when we want to break the goods, we will at least know that we did it and we did it on purpose as opposed to accidentally doing it and not noticing until it's way too late. Um, all right, 8668, before, after sequencing helper. Uh, shouldn't need to open the source code to successfully configure sequencing of custom actions. I don't agree. Um, you uh, have this, to know the is, actions. We, this is a bit of a change between three and four, right? Because when four added the architecture specific custom actions, you now, you have more that you need to know, but because of those custom action, architecture specific custom actions, we had to introduce all of these elements in like util to schedule the custom actions, which before we would say custom action ref. So you had the custom, you knew the custom action name, it was how you pulled it in. So rescheduling it was you know trivial. Now we hit it and made the IDs more complicated. Um, so I, I you know, understand the impetus. Um, but the problem is so many of these things end up creating multiple custom actions. And they're spread, and do you want the install one or the uninstall one? Exactly. You, I, that, the, the, I mean, that's the, the, the night, That what, happens it? all over the place. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not... You have separate for install and uninstall. So yeah. there's there's just no... This isn't the solution, the, I don't think. The, the solution here is, wait, it's property remove folders, EX before remove all the folders. I see. So you want to have a reference to a symbol as remove all the folders and then get scheduled for its action. And if there were only one action, I can see where this is useful. Yeah, you want to go for the rem and before remove all the folders, the X is actually fascinating because if you do that, you're actually scheduled during the early in the process because it just generates rows. It does not actually during the removal. So th this is this is not <laughs> this is not the way. This is a bad example because of of remove folder ex being the what I call the semi custom actions. Exactly. All the scheduling and costing is is yeah confusing. But yeah, it's done very early. Remove folder ex is done before cost finalized. Yeah. Which is why you have to have these silly set property things. Really annoying. Yes. Uh yeah no, this is not the way through. Um, we would need more. Yeah, you'd have to say before the uninstall action, before the install action. That's assuming it matters. I mean, you, yeah. If you're writing custom actions, it's just harder than that. And th now you could say that it should be easier to schedule the property for remove folder ex given the way it behaves. That I would totally agree with. Um, and solving the specific cases. Yeah, but I think this is just an example. Remove folder ex is is very problematic uh -huh. in a couple of different ways. Uh -huh. Well, and we already have an issue about trying to hide the suffixes and all that kind of stuff, which is a whole nother Correct. world of yep. pain that we like to solve, but we haven't sat down and figured out how to do all that architecture switching underneath. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think this is. I don't think like we'd be better off creating phases inside the install and just say, hey, you could be before this phase and before this phase, and just have and chop the the Windows installer sequence into bands of things, um, well known but fake bands in the sequence world, and just go from there, kind of thing. Right. Before files are removed. Before, yeah, time, yeah, yeah. After yeah, files no. are installed, after service installed, like just rough, big named things that you can then be before and after, even those named things don't exist. Yeah, that I mean, that's an 80% thing, it, it's not going to cover all the, the, you know, sometimes you want to, you want something to happen immediately before some other thing. Yeah, and then I get it. You have to look but at... I'm also at that point. It's like, yeah, th this is also, you know, definitely not an eighty percent scenario. You start getting into some very, you know, at a certain point you're digging deep, and and you know, we should have the documentation to support it. Correct. Cough, <clears throat> and and you know, you just understand you're you're working at a level that requires you to know an ID. Yeah, because like. It would, if we solved the underscore problem, which we would like to, hard problem solved, but like if we yep. solve that, then you could just say, if you want to schedule around this, if this thing is designed to be scheduled around, we could just document the action that you could schedule around. Right, right. And to be clear, because I did it, you know, build our short as the system preprocessor variable kind of solves that as well. Yeah. It's There's no pretty, reason to refer it's not to as pretty. It's not as pretty, but yes. Well, totally it's pretty. not. And I absolutely agree. We should, you know, come up with a solution for the for architecture and yeah whatnot i i it's fine about the source code this could just be a doc thing i'd rather this be a doc thing than create a big feature like this yep i agree because it it, it needs words around it like this thing is very special in that it gets scheduled before that. You have, like, there's a whole story. If you want to go before this, it does not behave the way you think it does, unfortunately. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm fine, you know, considering remove folder EX to be a bad example and a special case. Well, I think it's a good example oh. of the special case that has to be handled. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. That's fair. Shows that it's not as easy as just before and after. Uh, so, yeah. Not that, but. We want we could go documenting things. All right, um, adding ID attrib app attribute to the Bootstrap application breaks the bundle eight six seven three. What bundle? If I add ID, oh 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 oh. Okay, yes. No, this is this is a good bug, and he has a pull request. So, yeah, um, yeah. Assign this to me because I need to go look at this. He he gave like a a one line fix or two line fix with no information about what's going on. I was like, what is this? He's like, well, let me know if you should open a bug. Uh, I'm like, yeah, you should open a bug because no way enough information just in this one little thing. And it's very subtle. I'm like, uh, this may be right, but need a little bit more. Ah, I've lost it. I can't go on this page. All right, refreshing. Um, adding ID. Uh, okay, 8674 naked files can result in Wix 0095. All right, Bob, I. Don't know what this is. Oh, multiple prior references found. What? Okay. Uh, yeah. No. This this is this is a bad thing. It's a bug. Oh. This is um. Files can naked file. Um, unlike clothed file, <laughs> naked file can take a subdirectory. Yep. Um, which is great, right? You know, just it, yep. it's it's lovely, and I'm very happy that some smart person did that and he definitely deserves a raise but the ids did not take the generated ids did not take subdirectory into account oh that's bad so yeah so maybe he doesn't deserve that raise after all um you have to you end up with the same component id because it shares ids with the file and the component mm -hmm. Um, you end up with multiple components with the same ID. Yeah, okay. 
which yeah turns okay. into this this error message. Yep. 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 So there's already a pull request. And I and need to review it apparently. One more thing I need yep. to do here. Okay. Yep. Yep. You're welcome. That makes sense. Yeah. I've just ugh. all right. Yep. Yeah. Bad. And so it um yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it changed the ID, but it's just the internal ID, so it'll break patching, but only across major versions. So there we go. All right. Yeah, yeah. This is the this is the downside. The IDs change, so it it could not go into a five. Yeah, right. That's a good thing to know. Um, eight six eight five increase build parallelization. Oh yes, MS test X unit X unit. Yes, this whole can we just build all of everything with um, MS build instead of having to do a dot net. Or a command file in between things. Yeah, that batches batch files are bad for for absolutely parallelizing your build. Um, the the last time I tried to switch to a pure traversal project build, um, it was inside the extensions, um, which should be completely parallel. I mean, it, yes. it comes after the Wix build; it should yep. be completely parallelizable. Yep. Um, unfortunately, it breaks because .NET test did not like. Yep. Well, first of all, there's no support for running .NET test from desktop MS Build, which just sucks. Which is something we need as long as we have C++ plus in the mix. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'm not quite ready to give up on that, although it's an option. Uh, so replacing now it turns out at the same time that this was an issue, both Microsoft and Brad of X unit fame is they were off building, uh, replacing the current model for, for unit tests, which is generally you build a library and you have some external tool that loads the library and runs the tests that's gone away. They're now building the runners into an XE along with your test code. Sounds like a bundle, a bootstrap application. It, yep. it kind of is. And this is this is fabulous because, for parallelizability anyway, because it means you build an XE just like any other XE that we're building and running it is independent from theoretically anything. Nothing is downstream of a unit test, right? So, Theoretically, you can end up where you've built all of your code, and at the tail end of the build, all the unit tests are running. Um, they contribute a lot to the build time. Yeah. A lot. Like heat. Our least favorite part of Wix is heat. That's right. It's going away. Yeah, I know. It's well, a lot. Yes. Right? But until it goes away, um, you know, building heat takes a few seconds. The heat unit tests. Or which are basically actually integration tests, take between 30 and 45 seconds. Yeah. That's nuts. So, yeah. But unit tests are entirely independent. They can happen simultaneously with some exceptions because of, you know, MSI. Um, and separately, you know, they don't need to be, we don't need to be holding up the whole build to run unit tests from, you know, some component. So this is the first step. Um, I, I made it kind of an epic level issue, okay. but the the unit tests are the first step, I think, um, to really getting uh, the traversal build happening. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. So uh, you're going to go explore the what it takes to what it does to the projects here. To, to do newer build, newer unit test build system. Yep. All right. Temp directory uh, issue after Wix 3.14.1.8687. Uh, can't upgrade for various reasons. Uh, do I have the issue? Security would be nice. Get issue. S failed to create temp directory. Temp directory. No. Just they want Upgrade they want the stuff. fix, yeah. yeah. They want the fix stuff. that was in 501. Is this for custom actions? Yeah. Yeah, no, you can upgrade to five separate from all the other things. Yeah, doesn't matter. Go to five. 
don't care. Um, patch 501. Uh, patch build. Don't go to 4. Go to 501 because it has the fix for the SFXC directory thing too. Patch build tries to set non-nullable field to null when deleting a row. Oh, that's not. That sounds bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's bad. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. This is uh, just another you know change between three and four. Yeah. Four adds nullable nullables. Yeah. Um, whereas B three just said had a separate field for whether it was set. Okay. So nullables are natural there. All right. Well, if you have a repo, um, I can probably take this unless you want it. Like if you have the repo for us. Uh, I don't know how easily I can extract it. I'll take it for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was fast. Not even a little bit of pushback. No, no, I should take it. Uh, I, I'll help, but I don't know if it, without a repo, that's not going to be I, easy. I it's like that's going to be. It's like the same thing. Here, I made the two line changes. Like, yeah, what the what what caused this? I don't know. Right. Um, eight six nine three setting install location install source in the bundle ARP entry. Um, does Burn not set the install location today? I thought we did something. No, in our no. registration. Hmm. Okay. No. Well, it's the uh, what is the install location for a bundle? Of You'd have to. Say, I thought we have. Oh, that's only with Center BA thing. Yeah. So we would need something like ARP install location. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. So. Yeah, you'd have to pick something. <laughs> it's a string. <laughs> you'd have to say this one <laughs> and call it good. A variable and burn that then you pass all your messiahs and it does the right thing kind of thing. Yep. Install source. Is that actually a real thing or is that an MSI thing? Uh, I don't know what it is. I mean, MSI doesn't, I mean, MSI has its own source concept that's definitely not kept in ARP. Yeah. So I'm actually kind of curious. I mean, it sounds, it's like more of a um, advertisement. Yeah, you know, system center. No, system center is way too new for this. Um, back in the day when ARP actually let you add, when the A in ARP meant something. Yeah. Um, and it would just you know point to some network share or add or, move or advertised products. You could pick out of that too. Yep. 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 Uh, yeah. So this would be good to do. Also, keeping in mind the um, language change where we put it so we can mirror it into package at some point in time to start remote to start doing all the package information. Like, does this, is this an attribute on the bundle element? Mm. Um, because, you know, the bundle already has a bunch of ARP things on it. I think right. I forget. It so does, it's just, yeah. It's, it's a matter. I think it goes there, even though it's starting to get really busy, but I think it goes there. And then we should eventually do the same thing for package at some point in time. Um, get that on there. So that package and bundle are very uh, uniform. Well, I'd so argue that, that we should introduce something new for all the optional stuff. That that's the other. That could be option. identical between package and bundle. Sure, that that's another option. So we should decide which way we want to do that, and then appropriately deprecate things if there's too much on the bundle element, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, although I'm not terribly excited about everybody having an extra attribute every time if they are an extra element every time if they're always going to set these attributes but yeah we can go back right yes so, no yeah. that's why i'm yeah maybe it's yeah like most people don't need install location so yeah maybe that's something that doesn't live on the the primary mm -hmm. the primary element package and bundle both being relatively important All right, so I guess we need to see if this person wants to keep working on it. So we need to see a proposal for the XML authoring and things like that based off of the discussion yep. here. So yeah, seems reasonable. Cache events return the wrong type, 8702. Well, that sounds bad. Sounds like an enum thing not getting set correctly. Uh, Wix 5, okay. Acquire begin media action none. I did 
did expect the value return was cash copy at least. Oh. Uh, I don't know that that's true, but okay. Like, they don't show. They're saying their expectation, but they don't show the bundle log file. So how do we know that this is wrong? Cash begin. Desk is cash operation. None. I tried all the other cash function the same except for cash action resolving. Maybe begin it's always none. I don't know. All right, cool. I'll have to go up for grabs. Someone can look to get into that. That's interesting. Let's see what's going on. If it actually is wrong or if they, they didn't provide the log file. Oh, no, they did. Oh, my bad. Wait. Oh, begin. The action is none. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna have to go dig into it and see what this should be. So yeah, I can go for grabs. Interesting. See if it's if burn is wrong or if it's just somewhere in the translation that's getting mixed up there. But yeah, cool. All right. Woo. That was an hour and a half of triage to get through. I didn't look at the beginning. It was what, 25 plus eight or something like that? Yep. Um, yep. So like 33 issues. Cool. All right, so we'll have a few left over, but I'll go through that. So, whew, all right, that was that was plenty. Um, other things, things people want to talk about. If we haven't completely bored you, everybody's left. But no, it seems like most of the people are still here. Uh, other things people want to talk about, questions, comments, stuff they're thinking about in the outside world. Um, by my calculation, the next meeting is September 17th. Now that we've caught up on bugs, hopefully uh, we'll be in a good spot uh, to go through them because... I think it's pretty clear that uh, one month of bugs is not too bad, but two months of bugs ends up being like a lot. A um, little bit. And, you know, we probably could have done 45 minutes of bugs and left a few for next time, but then I should have really taken the oldest first. Or did I? No, I did. Uh, I did take the oldest. Uh, you did, yeah. Yeah, okay. We cut up the loose and then get to it. But it feels good to have a nice clean slate going this uh, September uh, when we'll do triage, things like that all again. Um, and discuss anything else that you guys want to talk about. Um, I don't know if there's anything else going on. It's pretty simple, but busy doing a lot of work at Fire Giant, so I haven't been spending a lot of time in the open source world. I do need to get to a couple of PRs um, and get to those. Just haven't prioritized those high enough yet. All right, I filled a bunch of space. Uh, we are uh, almost at exactly an hour and a half at 11.05 coming up here. So that's all I got. Bob, you have anything else? Uh, no. My, my, my brain is pretty much done for after 90 minutes. Yep. That sounds right to me. All right. We will be back in a month, September 17th. Um, I felt like also the time between July and August was also like organized, put a whole bunch of extra days in it. I don't know. Felt like a longer one. Anyway, uh, we'll be back in a month and we will uh, do trash and see what other things have come up in that time frame. Uh, until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye.